Drink beer. Think beer. You're listening to Brew Blood. Alcohol gives you infinite patience for stupidity. That from one of my favorite crooners, Sammy Davis Jr. I am Dustin. I'm Mark. Uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, we are live today. Uh, we're out and about. Oot in the booth, as the Canadians <laughs> might say. We're at the... Um, we're at the Bottle Shop. The bottle it's Shop, uh, World Beer Company. Yes. Uh, or World of Beer. They used to do the... Uh, oh, they used to pack, uh, do gift packs up here back in the day. And, they uh, did. The Bottle Shop here in Dallas was their first um, spinoff, uh, like a brick-and-mortar store for the World Beer Company. Yeah, there's a uh, apparently a Dallas and a Chicago location, yeah. according to their logos. There was being the operative word here. Well, in this case. there is. There were just there now is the right location. now. By the time you hear this, yeah. the Dallas one will be gone. But yeah, for now there is one. Yeah. So somebody back in the day when we first started said, "Oh, you should go shop at the uh, That's local craft very beer shops." Generic. I know. I can't remember who it was, but you know, like, oh, you should try to you know stay away from the the, the big guys and do your local uh, craft beer shop guys, and it's right. fine. And these guys have been around since about the time the craft beer kind of took off in Dallas. Right, yeah. And unfortunately, the downside is um, Greenville Avenue, which is where they were located or are right now as of this moment, it's taken off. It's had a resurgence. And yeah, it has, um, absolutely. it's really, as, as such, because they're a growler shop and a craft beer shop, it's really hurt their sales because it's gotten so busy right. that, as they said in their uh, article with The Observer, nobody wants to have to Valley Park to go in and get a growler full of beer. Yeah, and why would you? I mean, yeah. there's actually several growler shops in the area. Mm-hmm. You know, you have the one down by uh, Fair Park, which right. is Craft and Growler. Uh, you growler. have one up in uh, Lakewood called Liquid Growler. Right. Uh, you know, they're about to open one in Bluffview. Right, exactly. I mean, there's there's several locations that have yeah. ample parking. You can go to Whole Foods and get yeah, your growler filled. Yeah, it's not even mentioned. Central like Market, the bigger I guys mean, that do it. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, it's sad. I like I like the shop. I one of my first dates I went with my wife was to. Uh, to hey the now. bottle shop. And I still have one bottle of beer. Maybe we'll crack that open for episode 100, but <laughs> I still have one bottle left that a McKellar Brewdog collaboration from 2010 that I bought. It may be shop. interesting to do that then, yeah. It might be. It's, Maybe not, though. It might may, It may be terrible, yeah. They're, when we got here, we got here at 4. They opened at 4 today. They normally open up at 3, but they decided they're going to have their final closing weekend. They're going to release a bunch of rare stuff. So And it is super busy in here. It's super, super busy. When we got it's like here wrapped I'll, around the freaking building. Yeah, the line was wrapped around the building and we got in, we were able to score two seats at the bar, yep. luckily. And we thought about staying in the line and to actually buy each other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to buy bottles of beer. Right. But I think we gave up after about fifteen minutes and just decided screw it. I, I don't know. We're just sitting I don't at have the bar the, now and getting what's on tap, the rarities yeah. that are on tap because Well they only have three employees working. So right. they have one running the bar, they have one bar back. And then they have the cashier for the right. bottles. And it's just moving so slowly. I I don't have the patience in me, yeah, very absolutely. little patience to, to do whale hunting anymore. Me so. neither. Yeah, it, it's sad. It sucks. I hope they they say that um, yep. they might reopen somewhere else, maybe over in right. Garland or something like that. And um, Stephanie Roethlisberger, who is the general, she helped open this store, and she was the general manager, and she actually helped open um, the craft beer cellar, which we've talked about before. Which is actually a very nice location. Yeah, which is yeah. another spot where you can get... Uh, growlers and rare bottles. So she works over there full time. She's been still working over here sometime. Uh, the right. the guy who owns the place, um, he's an attorney, and he had a kid recently, and that was he says that was part of the decision to shut it down. But I'm sure I'm going to guess it was sales that yeah. affected it more. But who knows? Declining profits, I'm sure, contributed right. to that quite a bit. And they claim they may reopen somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. I hope they do because they've got a lot of great beer and it's always great to have more shops i think we need more sure, shops yeah. more task space always yep it sucks to see them go um it's a great it was a it, Mark didn't really care. it is and was cared. a great little spot but i look i i have no patience <laughs> very little patience we only came down here because it's the last day yeah exactly and i've never i haven't been back here in several years precisely because of the traffic right i don't want to deal with it the only time i'll come down here is if we're going to glorious i don't to, like traffic mark i don't, I don't know like what traffic you think either <laughs> But Glorious has, like, valley park- parking built in. Right, yeah. Otherwise, I don't come down to Greenville. I try not to. I try to avoid Greenville, unless there's a concert at the Granada. I would recommend anyone in the Dallas area that comes down to this area. Yeah. Uh, Uber down here. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. the way to do it. But there, is, there is no parking. Yeah, I don't want to Uber. You don't so. want to Uber for a growler. But I'm saying Uber down here, hang out for a while, yeah. do a couple other things, have dinner, have some drinks, and then go get a growler and get out of here. Which apparently... If Dallas City Council has their way and the residents of the M Streets down here that say that if you have a patio, you have to have extra parking, well, 
for for people who are not in Dallas, there is no room to grow parking here. Or you got to close by midnight, right? Or you have to, or if, yeah. if you don't do that, if you don't expand your parking, right. you have to close by midnight, which is just stupid. Unless you get a special a special exemption, which is just ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I agree. We're facing some real tough things around in the the restaurant business here in the area. It's a bunch of dumb decisions. It's a tough thing, pal. It is a tough thing. It's re- it's it's sad because you're stifling businesses around here. Where especially in this ride sharing economy, like you said with Uber, you yeah. don't need to park. And plenty and of people park like down by the old Walmart or and they walk. Right, and everything's supposed to start growing because, yeah. as Mark likes to tout, we are now in Trump's America. Yeah. So we should have... We're making America great again, right? Yeah, America right. should be great, so we don't have to worry about parking. <laughs> yeah. Let's just go ahead and have every business flourish and right. be done with it. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. And the other reason I don't like to come down to Greenville is, like, I used to come down here all the time when I was in my early 20s, just get smashed <laughs> to high Holy. You got quite messed up. Yeah, I mean, I've well, seen you get messed even up. Even in my here. thirty-five, I, I was down here and got <laughs> me- messed up. But I was going to say, not just in your twenties. But, but I used to come down here a lot more often. Right. Back when there were a bunch of booty shaking clubs, and um, he sh- he shook his booty. Quite I a did, bit. I did. Yeah, uh, there used to be a wild time down here, and I just don't have a lot of strong desire to return to that scene. I actually think it's gotten a little better. They kind of got rid it's, of this, it's grown this up stupidity a down here, and it's yeah. gotten a little bit better. But it's not as much um, the booty shaking scene anymore. Our uh, our friend Billy on uh, what's his Twitter handle? Do you know uh, at BK Harmony? Yeah, he is not a big fan of this area. He actually lives down here and yeah. thinks it's been a little bit uh, corporate. Yeah, uh, I kind of get his point on some of that. Uh, I think some stuff has been wedged in here. Yeah, but I think the stuff that's organically grown down here, like you know the bottle like, shop right. or across the way where we're going to record another episode, of Libertine. Yeah, you know, like stuff like that. I think. It's good for the area. A company cafe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's nice that it's replaced a lot of the stupid 20-year-old club scene that's been down here before. I, I agree. It's helped clean up the, the scene. And, and it's yeah. much like Deep Ellum, it definitely needed that. But It, it did. It, 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 suck. it sucks to see the bottle shop go. I don't know what's going to replace it. We don't know what's going to replace it. Yeah. Sad to see him go, but I... Look, Fortunately, been, craft beer has exploded in the yes. area, so there's a lot of other, there's a lot of other spots now. But I've been there in years. Fill that void. I haven't contributed to their coffers in years, so yeah, I mean, I'm either. just as guilty as everybody in else. In fact, today is the first time I've been here. I'm going to go and really? tell you that. Yeah, I mean, so it, I'm worse than you about it's it. It's packed. I mean, it is it is nuts to button here, elbow to ass, as Stefan likes to say. Uh, can, can I give you like a deep throat informant take on this? Sure. The bottle selection they have is not that rare. Well, we didn't get very far in it, though. It's not, though. Just take a, go over there and take a look. Okay. Well, I'm they, not saying it's bad. Yeah, I'm it's just, just not as rare as you I think there's a lot of nostalgia for the fact that they're leaving, that everybody's coming down here. Well, I wonder if that was for the ones that are supposed to raffle off at 8 o'clock, if that's the really rare stuff. True. Yeah, we got a few hours before that happens, but yeah. yes. It might be. Maybe that's what they were referring to. But True. Good point. Just what I could casually scan from above the heads of my other humans. I'm like, I can find vertical epic other yeah, places, you right. know? It's a great beer, but yeah. Do I need to load I, up a bucket and wait for uh, you know an hour through? A yeah, line? I like probably not. You said you, you saw somebody buying like a dozen Scaldus Noels. Yeah, and that you can find that easily every winter. There's no, <laughs> right. and it's a good beer, but it's not. I mean, exactly. It's I'm not, not a whaling yeah, beer. I'm not trying to judge and say any of these beers suck. I'm yeah. just saying. It's not that rare. Like it's like a whaling I'm excursion. Gu- I'm guessing it was for the eight o'clock, and people didn't realize. And they're like, "Oh, right. here's a beer." I should. I mean, I've been this line for fifty minutes. Right. I should probably fill up my bucket of beer. Sure. That's and probably I, what I it don't was. blame them for that yeah. too. Well, in, in fairness, let's go ahead and tell everybody that we got to this location at three forty-five. Yeah. Uh, Mark yeah, and I are luxurious, and we have that's right. We have Fridays, Fridays off. off. At least every yeah, other don't Friday. Don't you people have jobs? Tom or Thomas? Who's Thomas? Who's Who that? is Thomas? But Mark has every <laughs> Friday off. I only have every other Friday off. But the ones that I do, we can we can get down here early. We got yeah. down here at three forty-five, right? And it was already packed. It's already packed. It was already like halfway around the building. Yeah, crazy. It was. It was crazy. Yes. Well, bottle shop. R.I.P. Uh, see you at the crossroads. Uh, first victim of Trump's America. I hurt myself today because right. you guys are dying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, um, all right. Well, we're going to pick a beer. Uh, well, we actually, I guess we already picked a beer. Probably we're going to do the, uh, drink it. the Great Divide um, Oak Aged Yeti. Imperial great Divide. Style. Such a great brewery. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about Great Mark Divide. Mark Eatson, like he does Deep Ellum, but uh, they're a great brewery. <laughs> After this.
We talk a lot about hops, but what exactly are hops? In brewing, hops provide a bittering agent to contrast or balance the sweetness of malt, provide aroma, act as a preservative, aid with head retention, and provide a unique profile to beer. Hops are the female flowers of the plant Humulus lupulus, a perennial climbing plant that will grow up to 18 feet tall and is native to North America, Europe, and Western Asia. It tends to grow in the same soil that potatoes prefer and prefers a soil that is rich in boron, but depending on the qualities of the soil and the climate, a hop from one region will taste very different from a hop from another region. Being a climbing plant, like grapevines, farmers use trellises to help them grow. This produces a hardier crop because trellises free up energy that would have otherwise been used for structural growth. Because seeds are undesirable for brewing, farmers only plant female plants in hop fields. They're planted in rows six to eight feet apart, and in the spring the plants begin to grow, with the hop flowers, or cones, near the top. Harvest comes near the end of summer, when the cones are taken to a hop house for processing. The cones themselves contain a gland called the lupulin gland, which is yellow and waxy, and it contains alpha acid that provide bitterness and essential oils that provide flavor and aroma. The hop plant prefers a temperate climate and grows mostly along the 48th parallel north latitude. In fact, you may have seen the Sam Adams beer called Latitude 48, which makes reference to this zone. The 48th parallel crosses Germany, Austria, Hungary, China, France, Russia, Slovakia, Ukraine, Moldova, Kazakhstan, Russia, Canada, and the United States. No surprise, in the U.S., the 48th parallel crosses Washington State, where most of the hops in the United States are grown. Hops can also be classified into two very broad categories, bittering hops and flavor or aroma hops. Bittering hops have higher alpha acid, lower essential oils, and provide the bittering quality. Aroma and flavor hops have lower alpha acid and higher essential oils, and of course are used to provide aroma and flavor. Bittering hops are used early in the beer boil, whereas flavor hops are added when they're about 15 to 20 minutes left. Aroma hops are typically added near the end, within minutes of the end of the boil. Some brewers also use a technique known as dry hopping, where they add hops during fermentation. This increases both bitterness and aroma. Hops are also divided further into subcategories based on region, continental, English, or American. Continental hops, also known as noble hops, grow in Central Europe and are low in bitterness and have a strong floral or spicy aroma. English hops are also low in bitterness and have an herbal or grassy aroma, while American hops vary wildly, with some providing both a high amount of bitterness and aroma. From there, hops are divided even further into regions or other subcategories. Historically, the first documented cultivation of hops can be traced back to 736 AD, but the first documentation of hops and beer doesn't come until 822 in a series of German legal statutes describing tithes to a monastery. However, it wasn't until the 13th century that hops began to see serious use in commercial brewing. As before hops came along, or later when the nobility imparted high taxes on hops, brewers would use Groot, which is a mixture of herbs and spices that brewers use to flavor their beer. The dominance of hops and brewing really started after April 23, 1516, when Bavaria instituted the German Beer Purity Law and declared that hops were one of only three ingredients allowed in beer. And then in 1710, England declared that hops were the only bittering substance allowed by law in brewing, so that brewers wouldn't skirt the hop tax of a penny per pound. Lastly, hops aren't just used for beer. In some countries, they're used for soft drinks, and they're often used as an herbal medicinal treatment for anxiety and insomnia. Studies are also currently underway to investigate the use of hops as a relief for menstrual problems, and there is some evidence that they may be used in the fight against cancer. So we're talking about the uh, Great Divide Vintage Oak Age Yeti. Now, I will say that we don't know what year this is because they don't say it here at, at the bottle shop. So right. it's vintage, which means hipsters will love this beer. Right, yeah. If it's aged, they yeah. like it. If you just apply the label vintage, sure. your uh, small batch, homegrown, artisanal hipster will love this. Right. They'll, they'll bring their record players, portable speakers. They'll bring an entire like old stereo console well, yeah, the, to the shop and drink it'll it. It'll be on vinyl. Right. I mean, it's got to be. <laughs> this is a beer on vinyl, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. So the um, Oak Aged Yeti, the description is... Uh, crack open Yeti Imperial Stout, sophisticated sibling, oak aged Im- Yeti Imperial Stout. Although these beers come from the same clan, they have entirely different personalities. Aging on a blend of French Cuvivaldi and toasted oak chips infuses uh-huh. a subtle oak and vanilla character into Yeti's already intense chocolate, roasted malt, coffee malt flavor, and hugely assertive hop profile. I don't know that I would go hugely assertive, but whatever. At sure. 75. Uh, who says you can't tame a Yeti? 75 IBU. 
Now, before we get into the specific ratings for this beer, let's go yeah. ahead and just kind of review Great Divide. Oh, by the way, it's, sorry, ABU 9.5, IBU 75. Right. Serve in a snifter. Now, Great Divide has several great beers. Uh, we reviewed them back in episode 59. Right. Uh, and, and uh, you know, they did the double, their double IPA. It's called Hercules. That's a great. Hercules, Hercules. That's a great, highly rated beer. Um, they also have the Imperial Stout, the uh, Great Divide Yeti Imperial Stout. Regular. Right. Uh, they have that. They have the Oak Age. They have the, gosh, they have the oatmeal. They have the chocolate. They have uh, the, ti- the Great Divide Titan IPA. All of these are rated, you know, near four, near 100%. Right. Let's say four. Excuse me. Near 100%. Right. Uh, I was trying to do our ratings at like 4.5 <laughs> out of 5. But, yes. Um, so, Great Divide, one of those Colorado breweries that uh, pretty much... Been featuring Colorado a lot lately in the show. pretty much always deliver, though. Yeah. Let's be honest. Can you be honest, Mark? I, I'm never going to be honest. Oh, okay. In Trump's, yeah. Ameri- in Trump's America, I can say anything I want and say it's truth. You are fake news, Mark. <laughs> you are fake news. You are fake beer reviews. <laughs> but, yes, I, I, love, I love Great Divide. They're one of my... I would say they're like probably a top ten brewery for me. Why don't you marry it? I could. I would if I could. Hey, if I could, not then in Trump's I would. America. It's man and woman. <laughs> right. Yeah. I it's can't Adam do that and now. Eve, not Steve and a beer. I should have done it last week, but yeah. I can't do it now. But uh, yeah. So. Oh, no, no. It's Adam and Eve, not Steve and Sam Adams. <laughs> there we go. There that, we go. There you go. That's the brewery the, version that's, of it. Yes. Yeah. There. But just, um, just kill me now. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sure. But yes. Uh, yeah. Great divide. Great. They have several different. Despite their name, they're still right. great. Even though they're called Great Divide. They're right. great. But, um, <laughs> so yeah, great. Uh, most any beer I've had from them, I've enjoyed. I don't right. know how much you've had, Mark, but I've liked most ton, of them. Not a ton. Not a ton. You should uh, experience them more. Actually, I think I think I had the Chocolate Yeti way back in the day, and I had the uh, Hercules we talked about before. You That's should have the Chocolate Yeti today. Don't tell me what to do. Not just back in the day. You should have it today. All right. So this particular beer, Beer Advocate gives it a 94. Uh, Rate Beer gives it a 100 overall. And 99 in style. That's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. Uh, and untapped, I again, we've referenced this several times, but I say untapped. If untapped gives you a high rating, right. then that's the most exposure of any of these. Yeah. If it's over four, it's good. Yeah. This, 4.07 out of five. So right. I'm going to say I expect uh, good things from this beer. I hope so. I, I, I hope it's good. I I mean, saying a hundred overall, that ain't all. But we have to keep in mind, though. This is this is vintage, right? I mean, I wish Untapped was a little more. Um, well, Untapped is specific for a new one, so it's kind of yeah. Hard to tell. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Right. Like, they, they for this one, they that was me. Thank you. For they they on some beers they don't have it at all. They don't have them divided by year. They just have them divided by uh, right. Just by. General uh, general beer name, so I don't know why I had such a hard time with that, but I don't know. That was hard. Yeah. That seemed really difficult for you. I was struggling. So after this, uh, let's get right down to the vintage turntable playing, fedora wearing, small batch artisanal vintage oak aged Yeti. <laughs> Generically style. named vintage version. Yes, exactly. Great Divide Brewing Company was founded by Brian Dunn in 1994 in Denver, Colorado. Within three months of opening, Great Divide won an award at the Great American Beer Festival. It has gone on to win a total of 12 GABF awards, as well as four World Beer Cup awards. They have been rated as high as the 23rd best brewery in the country by RateBeer.com and the 7th best by Beer Advocate Magazine back in 2008. Between 1994 and 2008, Great Divide had grown enough to warrant building a new brewery that would be capable of producing triple their previous capacity. This also prompted a change in their labeling, moving to more sensationalized silhouettes depicting the region in which a particular beer originated. Great Divide was founded on the idea of creating powerful beers. All of their beers have an ABV above 7%, and six of their brews have, over the years, been over 10%, twice the ABV of a nice cool can of America. The brewery has also made inroads into pop culture and a sports stadium. It was featured on the NBC miniseries Asteroid, and is also available to consume at a Denver Broncos home game. So the BJCP for an Imperial Stout is that the overall impression should be an intensely flavored big dark ale with a wide range of flavor balances and regional interpretations. Kind of generic. A lot of those are pretty generic, though, in fairness. Yeah. Most BJCP stuff is wide open. Yeah, it is. Yeah, especially variable by style, as we frequently run into. Right. Uh, it does get specific sometimes, but True. oftentimes it's very generic. So um, what do you expect out of this beer? I, I don't know that I've had the regular Yeti before. 
Uh, the Yeti is a very nice, very nice imperial stat. It's very smooth. Uh, the H1 um, is going to be even smoother, of course. Right. Takes a little bit of the edge off. I've had the chocolate Yeti uh, several times. Uh, never had the oatmeal, but I did like the chocolate quite a bit. And so I'm expecting this one to be, I don't know, pretty a nice, robust imperial stout. Right. Yeah, uh, I'm hoping for a lot from it, especially being one of the special beers that they've held back here at the bottle shop and a reserve. I'm, I'm expecting that it's going to be great, but sure, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, so let's start with aroma as usual. Uh, first category, according to the BJCB, it should be rich and complex with variable amounts of roasted grains, maltiness, fruity esters, hops, and alcohol. And the roasted malt character may take on the notes of coffee. It does definitely have a fruity, some fruity notes to it. Yeah, there's not there's a little bit of coffee there, but it's not it's not an overpowering aroma, anyways. The coffee is pretty light on it, I would say, but uh, that's kind of been my experience in the past with it too. Is that the coffee's not overwhelming? Right. Yeah. Definitely some like raspberry, yeah, sort of blackberry type notes there for sure. Yeah. Some several different kinds of fruit. Yep. Yeah. The evil evil fruit. Always <laughs> right. invading our yeah. lives. Yeah. The uh, appearance should be generally very dark. It is an imperial stout, after all. Uh, I would Could say be there's no doubt about that. Black. Yeah. This one is pitch black. It's like. Yeah. Uh, much like the one, what did we do a couple weeks ago that was that had the consistency of oil? Uh, uh, that was actually last uh, week when we did the was that last ice week. Block. No, that was two weeks ago. Oh, that was two. Oh, yeah, that two, was two, it was two weeks, weeks ago. ago. Yeah, 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 the ice block. The ice yeah. block is very thick. It's too, a lot so. like that. It, it looks has like the appearance of like Coke Cola or something. Except Coke is more brown, I guess. That's this, true. this one is pitch black, like my soul. Well, the other one, yeah, the other one, the soda element was more like the taste and flavor. Right. But yeah, this one is definitely. I, I would say soda is generally like an oil. Right. Yeah. This is. Like the, the the heart of Steve Bannon. Sure, yeah, this exactly. A, about, about the color of that. Right, right. Yeah, so no light. It's uh, you can't tell. I'm assuming it's filtered being great divide. You can't see through it at all to know whether it is or not. I was really surprised. You can't there's, see through it, and there's absolutely no head on it. There's absolutely no head. Even coming off the tap, it was just a thin ring. Not even like the, the little normal thin white ring that you get a lot of times, so you don't even get that. Yeah. So flavor and mouthfeel, the most important of all the uh, categories here. No. Nah. Uh, rich, deep, complex, and frequently quite intense with variable amounts of multi nah, grains. How it tastes isn't important. <laughs> and just, mouth- about, just about how it smells. Mouthfeel should be uh, very full-bodied, uh, like Trump himself, and chewy with a velvety, luscious texture. Although they say in this, and this is the interesting being the vintage, uh, they said the body may decline with uh, long conditioning, and so since we don't know what vintage this is, it's not on the not declared on the it's board. Ju- it's just called vintage. It's just called vintage. Uh, uh, it, since the bottle shop is going out of business, they yeah. don't really care. Yeah. They're just going to tell you it's old. It's sharp up front. Yeah, that's definitely sharper than it normally is. I'll yeah. put it that way. Like if you get a if you get a new version of it. Uh, I would say it's not quite that cutting. Would you say it's lost some of its uh, body, as it were? I think it's been a Jenny Craig. It's not. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's it's thinned out a little bit. It's, it's been th- on it has a, thinned out. It's been it's, on a weight loss program it's definitely for sure. Chew- it's not chewy at all. It's uh, the ice block, which of course is that was a 2016 ice block, right? Uh, which, by the way, somebody tried to come at me on Reddit about that, that it's not 27%, it's 17%. Well, he pulled up a TABC declaration <laughs> for uh, 17%, but that was 2015. Why, why are you always combative on Reddit? I, not me. He came at me and was uh, like, aren't Icebox <laughs> illegal in Texas? You know how Reddit is. And, he, and he's like, and he, he like started talking to himself, going back and forth about whether or not Icebox are illegal to make in Texas or not. But he's like, it's well, 70%, not 27%. i am like, look, that's what the brewer said. We're going with it. <laughs> well, Franconia has been around uh, you know, for a yeah. day or two. Yeah. They probably would not be making a distributing beer that it's illegal. I'm guessing they're not going to lie about right. their ABV. Exactly. Yep. What, I mean, what do they have to gain? Right, that too. From that. Yep. I mean, I guess a little bit of notoriety because, ooh, you made a 27% beer, but sure. I don't think Dennis would do that. Yep, yep. And I don't really see the advantage to doing that. And I no, did forget to mention the commercial examples of this, by the way. Uh, Bell's Expedition Stout, Cigar City, uh, Marshall Zukov's Imperial Stout, the Great Divide Yeti Imperial Stout, uh, <laughs> the North Gold As- Old Rasputin, and the Sierra Nevada Narwhal, one of my favorites. Yeah, Old Rasputin's a great one, too. Yeah. I mean, there's some good ones in that list. Yeah, but it's it's definitely lost some of its body. Um, flavor-wise, um, it's very sharp up front. A little sharp, sharper than I would expect. Yeah, uh, it doesn't really stay on the tongue, either. It, it kind of floats through. It's, it feels almost kind of thin, but yeah. not necessarily in a loss of flavor way. It's just not... It's not like a big thick imperial stout for it's sure. It's not. It's not. It's definitely not what I expected from a right. Russian imperial stout. It's, um, 
It's like a medium body. It's definitely lost 10 pounds. It's Yeah. And the, the flavor really, you're right, the flavor dissipates. No, as someone that's had the a new version of the chocolate Yeti, not the regular Yeti, right. or not the aged Yeti, um, I would say this has lost considerable poundage. I, I would say a regular Yeti yeah. has a nice little... Uh, has a nice little gut on it. Um, you know, it's nice and thick, like you would expect. It's got a little bit of a head on it, too. Yeah. And this has lost all of that, uh, which, whatever vintage this is, uh, my guess is this is at least three or four years old. Right. Again, I'm wildly speculating because I don't have a year, but I bet it's not like like two years ago. I bet it's like three or four years. Yeah, probably so. Because they're busting out all their cellared stuff, and they yeah. probably had this sitting around for a bit. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, and but like the BJCPs, it's to be expected. In, in yeah, time. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, absolutely. I, I didn't definitely didn't expect the flavor to fade so quickly. Uh, See, I, I think the flavor is still there. It's just a little sharp on the back end, but uh, which is not normally there when you have it new. But I think the flavor is still pretty full. Like I, I don't think it's weak. I think it's really full in the front of the to- the front of the tongue, but then for me, it disappears in the back. Wow. See, to me, it lingers too. So it's I, just our different terrariums yeah. of mouths. We should probably make out and swap flavors, and yeah, then maybe we'll yeah, get the full that effects. That would totally do it. <laughs> Just swash it back, swash it back and forth, <laughs> snowball it. See, to me, it's a nice thin layer. It's like a, it's like a sheet. You know, it's not a blanket, but it's like a sheet over the right. tongue. Yeah, it goes from front to back. A little bit of bitter, a little bit of sweet, a little sharp. Yeah, it's almost like icy sharp. I don't know how better to say it than icy, icy? sharp, but it's like, it's like cutting cold, like a cold sharp. Like cold activated? Yeah, it's like a cold activated tongue Is it activity. Ice I don't cold, know. like like eczema. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a it's like a silver bullet. Yeah, to the tongue. People all over the world. <laughs> but uh, no, I I still like it quite a bit actually. Um, I don't know. I mean, what do you, what do you think? Do you feel like it's lost too much flavor? I mean, you don't have the regular to compare it to. Yeah, but. I don't. I don't. That's that's uh, my fault. Um, but we didn't know what we were doing until we stepped in here today. So here we are. Sure. Yeah. I, I like it, but I don't love it. If that makes sense. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I, I definitely think the the uh, aging in the oak barrels. I think you can definitely tell that up front. There's a little woody flavor to it. Yeah, just a little bit. A little bit. A little bit of group baby Groot there. Yeah. But not overly. <laughs> not so. Not, not Harrelson, but more. Groot. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, right. It, it definitely has the the oaky afterbirth, uh, but not so powerful as like a blood explosion. Absolutely, of, of a real afterbirth. So ratings, ratings. Go ahead, Mark. You're the hater. You go first. Um, I think Baby Groot is a, an appropriate name for this, or maybe Young Woody Harrelson from Cheers. Young mulleted Woody Harrelson. In that you know, he didn't expect Woody Harrelson to grow into the actor that we would all know and love. Uh, Groot, I mean, he's adorable, but he's oh, tiny. Yeah. He's not full power Groot. So this isn't Groot from the original Gar- Guardians of the Galaxy. This is Guardians of the Galaxy Two Groot. Yeah, this is the end of Guardians of the Galaxy Groot. Yeah, or new, he's, or he's new just, Groot. Yeah, well, he's just a twig in the pot. Right. Yeah, not as not as uh, as explosive in flavor, I guess, as I would have expected, or definitely not as chewy. Though I guess according to standards, that's okay. Sure. Um, it's, it's aged. I mean, yeah, it's, it's been aged two years. I, I wish I had... We're going to uh, say X amount of years. Yeah, yes. I wish I had some way to compare it to the original, but I don't, so I'm just going with what I know right now. You know, you can um, buy a brand new bottle at Total Wine or uh, any could, local, but local I, vendor. But I would have had to done that about an hour ago. Mile true. So, and then butt chug it in the car. <laughs> and that doesn't really tell the thickness of the beer or anything. Wait, you, don't, you don't have a tongue in your butt? <laughs> Well, I mean, not my own. <laughs> hey, now. Um, yeah, I think uh, Tiny Groot is probably the proper name for this. Right. Um, it's it's good, and I would love to now go back and try an original one for sure. Uh, it's good. Not quite what I wanted. Uh, definitely not the big, bold Russian Imperial Stout that I wanted. A little too thin. I know it's expected within the category. So that's fine. I'm not going to knock it for that. Uh, head retention I'm not surprised by, given how old this is as well. There's no head on it. And it's just... For me, it's not a great beer. It's a good beer, not a great beer. So I'm going to get 3.75 out of 5. This is one of those marquee beers from a marquee brewery. Uh, I absolutely love Great Divide. Their Hercules double IPA is one of my favorite double IPAs. Which we did in episode 59. 59. Yeah. And um, it's a Colorado-based brewery. You know, Colorado's got the Denver area has several great breweries. And um, this is just yet another one. Uh I think that this is one of their better beers. I think that the uh, the Hercules and the Yeti are the two that I would say are their marquee beers. Uh, I prefer the the chocolate Yeti, which I think you would quite enjoy if you ever find it, um, which is not that hard to find. It's just a little more rare. Right. Um, but 
Actually, having had the a new version of the Chocolate Yeti, granted, it's not a side-by-side, but it's more similar uh, probably to a new They're both big OK feet. Yeti than it is to right. an aged OK Yeti. They're both big feet, so. Right, exactly. So, having had that, I would say I bet a new version of this is probably actually better. I know a lot yeah. of times Imperial Stouts can age. I feel like this one might have aged a little too long. Yeah. Um, it's got a little bit of a too much bitter and a little too much sharpness on it. Which, believe it or not, um, people, beer can go bad. Exactly. Now, I don't think it's gone so far that it's bad, but I do think it's gone maybe a little too long. Yeah. Um, so, regular Yeti, I would be giving you a higher rating, I'm quite sure. Right. But for this vintage, X number of years old Yeti, which we have no idea, we're going to say 2013, 12, something like that. Yeah. Maybe older, who knows. Um, I would give this one... A little higher than you, I would give it a four out of five. Fair enough. And we we just had a, I mean, you should always be on the lookout for bad beer, and don't be afraid to send it back if it really is bad. In this case, it's not bad. It's just it just has it's aged out, I think. Right. But uh, we just had the uh, from Carbach the BBH the Cherry Hellfighter. Right. Uh, a good friend the other day, and it was clearly a bad batch of beer. It Absolutely. Was total, it was a dice subtle bomb. It tasted like somebody had dropped, like Paula Dean had, had shown up and <laughs> just thrown a vat of butter. her yeah. buttery ass into the vat, yeah, yeah. into the keg. <laughs> it was so buttery and barely any cherry, so. But yeah, always be on the lookout for that. But yeah, this one was definitely aged out of the category, I think. Yeah. Again, it's not bad. It's just it's not, not bad. It, it would be better newer. I think I would love to try an original, yep. uh, a fresh year's vintage of that. So. Agreed. All right, well, thanks for listening to yet another episode of Brew Bloods. Um, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the show. Give the mic. What up? <laughs> Who are we talking to? Uh, we're talking to a beer podcast called Brew Bloods. <laughs> what up, Brew Bloods? This is Sam. For the, come from the bottle shop. Come get this beer. Drink everything. <laughs> we're, 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 we're trying to. We're trying to empty the place out. <laughs> it happens. It's going to be empty by the end of the night. I decided. <laughs> Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the show. Thanks for all your support. If you would do us a favor, leave us a review on iTunes. We'd appreciate it. Uh, subscribe to the show. All the links are on the website, brewbloods.net. If you have any feedback on the show, you can email us at uh, brewbloodshow at gmail.com. Go to reddit, reddit.com slash r slash brewbloods. And you can always email us. At, I already said that. You can call us 469 beer It's 469 can email us? And you can follow us on all the social networks, uh, Tumblr, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and now Snapchat as well. We are, I'm trying to be more active on the snaps. So... Uh, yeah, especially Instagram. You guys love us on Instagram. Yeah, I don't know here. why. We get a lot of love on Instagram, so that's yeah, great. We'll, it is a we'll more take, visual we'll medium. We'll take the love. So. Who cares? Okay, we'll catch you guys next week. Probes. Probes.